In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do funnel building that leverages the power of keeping people on the Instagram platform while also being able to remarket to them in the future. I'm here at Social Media Examiner today to talk to you about how you can do effective funnel building through Instagram ads. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'm gonna walk you through some of the most common mistakes I see in remarketing and how to make sure that you avoid them in your campaigns. One of the most valuable uses of your Instagram ad money, other than the sales that you're gonna get today, is you're actually reaching out to your target audience. Too many times I see brands that spend money and say, oh, does the sales we got, it's all over. The thing is, it's not all over. You still reached a bunch of people that might wanna buy, just not right when they saw the ad. We wanna make sure that the money that you're spending to reach those people continues to go to good use as they go down the customer journey and you build that customer funnel. So when we talk about a customer funnel, it's important to envision it like one. You have top of funnel, which is usually called your cold audience or basically people that have never been to your website or don't really know anything about your brand. And then progressively they learn more and more about your products, your offerings and your services to the point where they're at considered bottom of the funnel, which means that they are very likely to buy. So the whole process of that is called the customer funnel. When you go to create ads in Facebook or Instagram, the first thing they ask you for is what your campaign objective is. Most times people are going to pick that they want a conversion. Makes sense, right? They're saying, what do you want this ad to do? And you're saying, I want you to convert people. It's great in theory. The problem is this. If you are running to a top of funnel audience that doesn't know your brand well, and you're telling Facebook, hey, I want you to go turn these people into paying customers, it's going to be competitive. And there's not a lot of those people. It's going to be expensive to reach them. You're going to have a ton of competition and they're not really worth that much money to you yet because their likelihood of buying is very low. Think about yourself as a user. When was the last time you were hanging out on Facebook or Instagram, you saw an ad, you said, I'm gonna buy that right now, knowing nothing about the brand, having never interacted with anything they've put out, you click on the ad, you go to the website, and you buy a product for $100. Not likely, right? You wanna learn more about the brand, you wanna understand what they're selling, what it offers, how much it costs, and what you get. Really hard to do that with one ad. So now that you know why conversion ad types are so expensive, let's talk about some of the ways to get to that core audience, but for a lot less money. So when you set up your campaigns, instead of choosing conversion, choose something that has a cheaper cost. My favorite way to do that is to choose engagement. Engagement audiences are much easier for Instagram to grow, scale, and to find people. You're not asking it to do anything such as find people that will leave Instagram, let alone someone that's gonna go buy as soon as they see your ad. Engagement ads are a great low cost way for Instagram to find people that are interested in your brand. If you're going to be running engagement ads on Instagram, it's really important that you know a few things. The first is understand what your audience responds to. You're probably going to find the things that people engage with on Instagram are different than what they engage with on Facebook. It's a much more visual medium. The body copy isn't called out as much and there aren't any headlines. The way that you tell your story and the way you encourage people to interact is probably gonna be different. This is also why it's really important that you understand how different placements work. Things like Instagram story ads are gonna operate very differently than what you see in the feed. And the nuances are not small. Make sure you check out our video on the differences between feeds and stories so you understand what those experiences look like and you can design a highly engaging top of funnel creative to make sure that you are getting as large an audience as possible engaging with your creative. I see too many brands spend money and not maximize their audience. Let's talk about a way to make sure you're doing that even when you're buying these cheaper audiences at the top of the funnel. Let's say you set up a campaign objective and you're saying, I want people to engage with my ad. You'll get those engagements. But the thing is, people do other things with those ads other than engage with them. Let's say, for example, you run this campaign and the creative has video in it. You can create audiences based off of what video they watched and how long they watched it for. That might be different than the people that engaged with the ad. So you're not spending any more money and instead of just one audience full of engagers, you're now adding on a second audience you can remarket to of people that watched the video. There are a million different ways you can create those kind of combinations. The key is to look at all the options that Facebook and Instagram give you to make those audiences and not have to set up separate buys to get all of that data. Creating an engagement audience is kind of a strange thing. You're gonna go create audience and you're gonna say custom audience. You go to Instagram business profile and this is where you would pick how they engaged with things. Everyone who engaged with your business 
on Instagram in any way, shape, or form could be picked there. You can get more specific and say people who engage with a post or ad, if they visited your business profile, if they sent you a message, if they saved a post or ad. The other nice part is that when you pick these things, you can say how far in the past you want it to go back. This can be helpful if you don't have a ton of website visitors, say in a week or two weeks. You can go back to up to a year if you need to make the cookie pool bigger. So if you're looking to make that audience bigger, you can continue to do a couple different segments in varying date lengths here and just save them as separate audiences to see which one's gonna work best for you. So to create a video view audience, you're gonna create an audience and out of all these options, you're gonna click on video. There are predetermined lengths of time that you can choose from for how you segment your audience. So you have three seconds, 10 seconds, 15, what they also consider through play, or you can do it by percentage. So if your video is longer, you may wanna say it's 25% of my 15 minute video. You can choose these and once you choose them, you have the option to pick which video specifically you want to focus on. If you don't have a lot of views per video, and if the videos are all kind of targeting the same people, you can choose multiple videos to make sure that the audience is big enough to remarket to. You're showing your ads to people that don't know who you are and they're showing they're interested either by watching your video or engaging. So now they're moving through that customer funnel and they're on your brand journey. As they get closer to the bottom of the funnel, they're worth more to you. So that's where those conversion objective prices start to make a little bit more sense. It may be that they're at the point where you can get them to become someone on your email list, but they might not be ready to purchase yet. So you might have to experiment with different types of conversions to figure out what's gonna work. But I guarantee you, your conversion rate and your costs will be a lot lower than trying to push that at the top of the funnel. So we just talked about top of funnel, and we talked about bottom of funnel. So maybe you're wondering, is there a middle of the funnel? In fact, there is. Middle of the funnel is interesting for brands though. Sometimes it's very much needed, and other times it's not needed. Your data will kind of tell you whether or not it's something you need to consider spending some time on. And here's how you know. If you're spending money on the top of the funnel and you're getting people into being interested in your brand, and then you're remarketing to them, assuming they're bottom of the funnel and you're pushing for a conversion that they're just not doing, that's probably where you need a middle of the funnel. There's something not connecting for them for some reason. Maybe it's perceived value versus cost. Maybe they don't understand enough about your product or service, but you can still address that in the funnel and with remarketing. Because this audience isn't necessarily totally cold and basically not valuable to you yet, but they're also not the highly valued people at the bottom of the funnel you wanna pay all that money for, you may wanna pick some objectives that are somewhere in the middle. So when you set up your campaign, choose something like traffic. And maybe what you do is run blog posts to those people. Maybe they're your most visited blog posts, your longest ones, your most informative ones. Maybe you choose to run a lead ad where you say, here is our 50 page ebook on how to do these things. Anything that continues to add value, but doesn't feel like the commitment of a purchase, that's what the middle of the funnel is perfect for. It's perfect for nurturing people until they're ready to raise their hand and be at the bottom of your funnel. So now that you understand more about making funnels on Instagram, I'm sure you're totally stoked to go out and start doing this. But there are a few things I want you to be aware of. Take this advice that you can avoid some of the mistakes that other advertisers make. The first is when you're looking at how you spend money on these types of efforts where there's multiple steps involved, you have to look at total money in and what you're getting out. It isn't really fair to an engagement campaign to say, this isn't converting. It's not creating customers. I'm just gonna turn it off. That's not its job. Its job is to get interactions and fill that top of funnel. The job of bottom of funnel is to convert those. So what you wanna do is look at the money, no matter how you divide it up among those two things, as one spend. You are using it to create an ecosystem of people that are coming into your funnel and exiting as happy customers. Evaluating it as a broken up budget across a bunch of different campaigns is gonna wind up having you spend a whole lot of money on bottom of funnel and never really filling the top. Mistake number two that I see. When you're making your ad sets, make sure you think through not only who it is you're trying to reach, but who it is you've already reached or simply don't want to. Well, you might wanna consider things like people that came to your website and only visited one page or people that have already converted. You don't need to be spending money to show them top of funnel ads when they're already a happy customer. So now you've got all these audiences and all this data and you may be wondering, what do I do with all of this? Click the video on your screen and I'm gonna show you how to analyze your Instagram ads data. If you're just getting started with Instagram ads, you are not gonna to wanna to miss the video my friend Amanda Bond put together. You can click on it right here and it talks about how to get started for just $5 a day.